few 21-year-olds have statues erected in their honor. Fewer still are the number of young men who accomplished what Frank Luke Jr. did. He was America's top ace at the time of his death, having shot down at least 18 enemy airplanes and balloons in World War I. He was uh, given a job and he did it. And he was a daredevil, he was. Bill Luke Jr. never knew his uncle, but learned plenty about him from family members. When he was in high school, he had the brainy idea that he'd like to see if he could use a, an umbrella to, and jump off the auditorium of Phoenix Union High School. Uh, his principal said, why don't we try this first with a dummy? He did that and found that there was a lot of damage. So he decided that wasn't a good idea. Before Luke joined the Army in 1917, he worked the mines in Ajo. There was a prize fighter that came through the, the mining camp, and he decided that he'd challenge the guy, and he won. Luke was sent to France in the spring of 1918. He reported to the front a couple months later. Uh, Major Hartney told uh, Lieutenant Luke uh, when he first checked him out and everything in combat, he says, if you last two weeks, uh, you may be assured of, of having, having it made, you know, being able to survive. And two to three weeks was considered uh, normal uh, life expect expectancy of the pilots that flew these airplanes. All these aircraft, as I mentioned earlier on over there, are fabric covered, which is bed sheet, uh, the same thing you sleep in every night. Just Mel Derry gives tours at the Champlin Fighter Museum at Falcon Field in Mesa. The museum has a replica of Luke's airplane, the French-built SPAD-13. Luke preferred to go after the most dangerous of all targets, observation balloons. It, was, it wasn't uncommon if you went down and around a balloon trying to shoot it down, you'd end up uh, being shot down yourself it was from the people on the ground. So that was the reason most people avoided it. Luke's passion for downing balloons earned him the nickname, the Arizona Balloon Buster. He was the most daring aviator, the greatest fighter pilot of the entire war. His life was one of the brightest glories of our air service. He went on an eight-day rampage and shot down 14 enemy aircraft, including 10 balloons. Captain Eddie Rickenbacker. After his two closest friends died on balloon-busting missions with Luke, the Arizonan began going it alone and was grounded by his commander. Now on the way back, he shot a balloon down, came in and landed, and his base commander says, put yourself under house arrest, you're going to be court-martialed. So that really upset him. So he went out, got in his airplane, and left a note and said, watch the three bags on the Meus River. The Arizona balloon buster found more than a half dozen German fighter planes waiting. Nearby French residents claim Luke downed two German planes, but were never confirmed. He went on to shoot down all three enemy balloons, but Luke would not return to base to face the consequences of defying orders. He had been hit by anti-aircraft fire. Luke saw the congregation of German soldiers, went down and strafed them, and supposedly killed maybe six of them, and then uh, went around and landed in, uh, adjacent to the village. And that's when the Germans approached the airplane, expecting to capture him, and he wasn't there. No one knows for sure what happened next. Historians believe Luke got out of his airplane but died from his wounds before the Germans could kill him. Luke's death made the headlines back home, his brief life gone, but not forgotten. I think he was an, an extraordinary, extraordinary boy who met an extraordinary challenge and did the best he could. An Air Force base is named in Luke's honor, a reminder of his success and sacrifice. Luke is buried in a military cemetery in France. His simple cross does not boast of his accomplishments. Those speak for themselves.